three, two, one. Hey everyone, welcome to the Procreate Beginner's Guide, Learning the Basics. Today, I'm going to teach you a little bit about the interface and how to get started in Procreate. I know Procreate can be a little bit intimidating if you've never used it before, but in this tutorial, I'm going to kind of help you get to that point where you feel comfortable and confident using the program. When you open Procreate, you're, you're introduced by your photo gallery. So this holds all of your saved work that you've used um, in Procreate. On the right hand side, you'll see there's four options, select, import, photo, and the plus. So if you click the select on the top, all this does is open up a selection panel where you can individually click your artboards. You can simply move them around. You can stack them. Um, you can group them if you want. You can even preview them. You can even duplicate them. So this opens up the window for you to ultimately play around with your gallery um, whenever you feel like it. Next, you have your import and your photo. It's typically the same option, but what this does, it allows you to import um, photos or files directly from your iPad into Procreate. So you don't have to go out of the program to pull stuff in and then go through a backdoor way of getting it in Procreate. With these two options, you're able to directly import them in there. Next, the most important component, I think, on this selected page is your plus. This allows you to create your canvases so where you know you can start your work. It's a good selection of artboards you can choose from. Um, but if you don't want to use any of these, you can also create your own artboard. So if you click this little hollowed plus right here, it pulls up a dimension list where you have your width, your height, your DPI, and your maximum layers. So typically I try to go somewhere between 18 to 24 or 16 by 20 inches. So on this side, you have your millimeters, centimeters, inches, and pixels. So I would select inches and I would do 18 by, oops, 18 by 24. And as you notice, um, your width and your height, 18 inches by 24, your DPI is at 300 resolution. Um, DPI stands for dots per inch. Um, that's basically your resolution for your graphic. You know, you want something, if you're printing something out, you want to have something that's high res and you don't want something that's low quality, but you kind of sacrifice the amount of layers you're able to use. So just think about that when you're creating your design, if you're creating something with a lot of layers, you may want to lower your DPI just a little bit. Having something below 300 DPI isn't bad, but you also want to, you know, find that happy medium for the most part. So let's say I drop my DPI to 150. Now I've dropped my DPI halfway down and we now see that my maximum layers is at 65. So, you know, it's a give or take. You lower your DPI, you get more max layers, you up your DPI, you lose layers. 20 layers is good enough for me. So I'll hit create and boom, you've created your first artboard. Now that we're in our, our artboard, I'm gonna go over a few of the interface components on this page, starting from left to right. So on the left side, this is your gallery. This takes you back to your gallery section where we first started, your actions, your adjustments, your selection, and your transform. On the right side, you have your brush, your smudge tool, your eraser tool, your layer stack, and your colors. On the left middle, you have your brush size, your brush sizer, so you can increase or decrease the size of a brush, your color selection, your color picker, your quick pick, I call it, and here is your opacity right here. And then the last two, you have your undo and redo. Let's start with our toolkit on the right. So of course you select that and Procreate has a series of brushes that you can select from, um, straight from the app, or you can download brushes online for free, or you can support other artists who make these brushes for Procreate and, and use them. Um, 
I'm a big fan of supporting artists when it comes to this. So I highly recommend it because you'll get so many different type of brushes that you never thought that can be possible within Procreate. So I always recommend supporting other artists who create brushes. But let's start off with the simple brush that comes with Procreate and that is the sketch brush and it's the 6B pencil. Our brush is selected. Our color is like a dark pink. And of course, with the Apple Pencil, Procreate can register pressure sensitivity. So the lighter you press, the lighter your stroke, the harder you press, the darker. Right here, so I'm pressing light, pressing light, light, light. You can barely see it, then I increase my stroke. So the harder you press, the heavier your stroke. So it's light here, you can barely see it, and then boom. So examples of that. If you keep your pencil straight up, you have a dark line, you're applying a lot of pressure, so your line's gonna be dark. If you tilt your brush to the side, you're allowed to sketch, or not sketch, or blend or shade. You can shade if you tilt your brush to the right. Kind of how it would work as an actual pencil. So that's amazing that Procreate can register those type of gestures with your pencil alone. But cool, now that we've focused on your sketch pencils, let's go more in depth with the wider range of artistic brushes that Procreate provides. So let's go to, um, let's go to artistic. And we're going to use, uh, let's do Old Beach. So we're gonna click a new layer. I kind of jumped the gun here, but that's fine. Um, so when you go to your later layers panel, you can select a new layer by pressing the plus. Um, the checks on the right shows that those brushes are active. So you can turn them off by hitting that plus and it goes away. Or you can slide to the right. You can lock the brush, meaning that it won't be touched or it can't be modified. You can duplicate the brush, of course, making more than one of that brush, or you can simply delete the brush. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to delete it. So have me a fresh new layer to work from. So now we have a new artboard selected. I mean, sorry, a new brush selected, Old Beach. We're gonna apply the same principles that I've explained before using pressure sensitivity. So start off light and you get heavier and heavier and heavier and it shows a better, this is a better example of using the pressure sensitivity because you can actually see it compared to using the pencil where it happens to be more refined. This is a, a very broad and loose brush. So you can really experiment with the look um, and feel of these brushes, right? Cool. So we're gonna keep this layer. We're gonna keep this mess <laughs> that I've made and we're gonna go into the smudge tool. So what the smudge tool does, all it does, it just moves the paint across the screen. So um, I wanna use the same brush that I used for my active brush on my drawing brush um, to give that example. So let's go back to artistic. Let's use Old Beach again. And the color doesn't really matter when you're using a smudge. All you're doing is simply smudging. Like if you were to take your finger and smudge on a piece of paper. So I'm going to, you know, move this around, kind of smudge it off. Um, and yeah, that's all it does. This brush is really good for blending. If you want to blend colors together, you want to add a little bit of a shadow shading or manipulate a little bit of the opacity without using the slider, you can use the smudge tool. And I think that's the best option when it comes to the smudge tool. All right, now we're going to go to our eraser tool. And of course, self-explanatory. What does the eraser do? It erases. So I'm going to go across the screen using the eraser tool. Easy, self-explanatory. And it's also pressure sensitive. Well, not really. It really depends on the brush that you use. So right now I'm using the marker brush and each brush has its own properties, which is a whole nother um, world when it comes to Procreate. And I'll be sure to make video content about that. But these brush properties allow you to really work within its name, like a marker tool. Sometimes when you're using an actual marker, you can go over it more than once and it changes the opacity. Um, so it actually feels like you're using a marker on Procreate, in Procreate. So 
That's what I love about these tools because even though you're working in a digital space, you're still able to have that traditional feel as you're working through your art. Okay, so lastly, let's talk about our color panel. Now this is where everything can get really tricky, but very rewarding if you understand how to use this selection. So of course you click your colors and Procreate defaults colors for you. If you go to your palette and you can see it has a series of um, palettes that are given. These were created by me. Um, but Procreate gives you an opportunity to use a selected amount of um, a selected amount of palettes already given. Um, it can still show in two different windows. You have your compact and you have your card. In your card section, you're able to see the description of the actual color. You can go ahead and stay within your compact or your card, doesn't really matter. So you go for your palettes, let's go to values. Values, this is where you can play with your um, RGB or your HSB. Since we work on a screen, you'll be using uh, RGB within your color sliders. And what that does, it spits out a hex code. And what a hex code is, um, for all my coders out there, it's just a set of variables that you can use to program a color. Um, I'm not sure that's the technical term for it, but that's my term for it. Um, cool. So um, then we're going to go into our harmony section. And this allows us to look at our colors from different values, complementary colors, split complementary um, opportunities. So if you go to your complementary colors, you have a picker that has um, you control one picker and then the other one procreate will calculate what color you're using and find that complementary color. So you have your complementary, your split complementary, your analogous, your triactic and your tetractic. I hope I said that right. But these are all the options you can use and it gives you so many opportunities to find the right colors and blend them properly. And then you go to classic, your top right is your highly saturated, your bottom right is also your black, so your dull. So the further to the right, you'll get your saturated and your dulls. Here, you go more into your whites and your grays. So keep that in mind. And then of course your disc. I feel like this is the most trickiest um, selection here because you would have to first move this dial to find the color and then move the dial in the middle. Whereas all the other options, you can just simply drag one dial and it'll find the right color for you. So in my opinion, if I were to find colors or I'm trying to search for colors, I would stay within my classic, harmony, values for specific colors, palette to have a range of colors, um, your harmony for your experimental colors, and your classic for your go-to. That's what I would say for the most part. All right. So now that we've kind of discussed majority of, you know, the basic things that you need to know within Procreate, let's, let's do a small little demonstration. Um, I don't want to make this too complicated because I know that we, we covered a lot, but I don't want to overstep and do things that we aren't ready to do yet. I just need one night where it just feels right. That's all we like, we do all we like I just need one night, where it just feels right This starts all we like, I just need one night I just need one night, where it just feels right This starts all we like, we do all we like I just need one night, where it just feels right This starts all we like I just need one night I just need
just need, I just need.